Tom Hardy, the actor who plays Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. Inside me, there is a bit of an explorer adventurer, definitely. And former F1 Ferrari driver, Mika Salo. My face is frozen, I can't smile anymore. Two thrill seekers about to embark on the toughest road trip imaginable. They're in eastern Siberia, where winter temperatures plummet towards an inconceivable minus 70. They're here to see if they've got what it takes to drive from Yakutsk, the coldest city on Earth, along the so-called Road of Bones to Omicron, the coldest inhabited place on Earth. They'll have to cope with lethal roads coated with layers of rock-hard ice, unlit wilderness, tyre-ripping terrain, and temperatures so cold that if the engine's turned off, it could freeze. Ah, oh, must be soft the engine by mistake. Why would you do that? Oh, by mistake. It's a thousand kilometer drive on the coldest road in the world that will push man ah! and machine. Car four to car one, we have a flat tire. Stop convoy. Step in, step in. To the edge of what's survivable. Winter in Yakutsk, eastern Siberia, where temperatures regularly fall to a minus 40. It numbs exposed skin within seconds. The journey to Omicom will take Tom and Mika East, over the frozen river Lena and onto the Kolomar Highway. The further into the tundra they go, the colder it gets. Your fingers will start to freeze and fall off, you know, if you leave them out of the gloves for long. And that's not a joke. The race. Normally when there's uh, sunshine and uh, strawberries are fresh always and uh, you're also in bikinis, but uh, here it's quite a little different. Mika was in the top echelon of motorsport as a Formula One driver for eight years. But this is driving to a completely different set of rules. The laws of extreme physical and mechanical survival. There's a definite adventurer in Tom Hardy who has always relished the physical side of Hollywood roles he's embarked on in his career. The mission begins in a snowy city compound. Tom and Mika are about to meet the vehicle their lives will depend on for the next seven days. Let's take a look at what's going to take us across the highway of bones for the next thousand kilometers. Oh, that's good. Good tires it has. Oh, wow. And why do they have the metal studs? Is it what's it for? Ice. Yeah, it just bites an ice a little bit, doesn't it? I think my fingers are frozen to the top of the car. <laughs> Already. It would take a very special set of preparations to cope where so many others fail. So Tom and Mika will be supported on this expedition by an elite team of experts. There's Matt McKenney, a consultant to explorer Sir Ranulph Fiennes. Even the slightest incident um, can suddenly become life-threatening within seconds. The vehicles break down or, you know, we're caught in a, a snowstorm or something like that. You could be stranded for days. Um, helicopters can't fly when there's thick fog, and we get a lot of fog when it's this cold. Aldo Kane is the ex Royal Marine Commando in charge of security. Out of all the places I've been, this is definitely one of the, the most hostile with regards to um, living, operating, and, uh, and carrying out an expedition. The man entrusted with modifying the vehicles so they cope with those conditions is former rally raid driver and adventure mechanic Paul Marsh. It's a huge responsibility. You know, the people's lives depend on vehicles like this. So the whole preparation period must have been about six months, and the build period was at least 200 hours. Before their vehicle could be made fit for use in such extreme conditions, Paul took local advice on how to keep a motor running with upgrades like double glazing. They doubled up the windows on that. Yeah, they get uh, frozen inside if they're not doubled. And to protect the heart of the car, an insulating rug to stop the engine's coolant and oil from solidifying. When, when you said we were going to travel across Siberia, we knew it was going to be pretty serious. This is just ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> you have to put a duvet on your car. There's one other local trick that ensures your engine's pistons don't seize up. Simply never turn the engine off. The engine will run 24-7 while we aren't in sub-zero temperatures of minus 50 degrees. 
So that's where the oil plays a huge part because if we don't have good oils in the engine, running your engine 24-7 could be a huge problem. We have gone and changed every fluid in the vehicle. So the engine oil, which is a fully synthetic helix oil, that's gone into the engine. The front axle, rear axle, transfer box, gearbox, all had shell fully synthetic oils in them. These oils will operate in these conditions. You know, they're designed to sort of go down to these sort of temperatures. At minus 50, most tires would simply shatter. And if fluids are allowed to freeze, the engine seizes. I think it's okay. It's four wheel drive and a good tire, so it goes anywhere. That works. Yeah, that works. <laughs> <laughs> it's 9 a.m. on day one. The journey is about to start. There's no room on this expedition for dead weight at all because everyone needs to look out for each other. And if they're not looking out for each other or themselves, then uh, that's when injuries and, and accidents can happen. Well, let's go then. The first few seconds after a cold start are critical for an engine. The battery can struggle. The fuel evaporates slower. All the lubricants are gooey. Paul checks engine performance on a thermal imaging camera. All the mechanical components are in yellow, meaning the engine is operating at an even temperature. For this trip, car care is as essential as medical supplies. Have you ever driven across the river before, me? Um, I don't know. Probably. I don't know. To the snowmobile, yes. To the snowmobile? No, not, not to the car. Park. At the city limits, the convoy reaches a 35-kilometre crossing of the River Lena. It's the 10th largest river in the world, and even though it's fast-flowing, at these temperatures, it's completely frozen for eight months of the year. There's the boats there. Oh, my God, there are boats. Oh, this is incredible. This is just the beginning. You wouldn't stand a chance if the, um, the ice cracked and you went through. This must be a couple of metres thick ice here. Bloody well hope so. Then they hit the Road of Bones, a major Siberian route built by prisoners of Stalin's harsh forced labour camps known as the Gulag. Then there's another thing the boys will have to get used to pretty quickly. It's not exactly littered with service stations for comfort breaks here. So when you see one of those rare roadside cafes, you stop. After three hours, they make it to their first lunch stop. Kak Goma. And while the crew gets stuck into some local delicacies... This is at lung tissue. Tom makes an important loo-related discovery. Do you want to come and see a traditional Siberian toilet? Oh, the local commodes. Those stalagmites or stalactites? What do you reckon? It's just a big steaming pile of coal. <laughs> <laughs> Still to come, Tom takes on the locals and tensions mount as conditions worsen. He'll probably be dead by the time we get to him. Fact. 